Okay, come on, Fury. Jump your head. Come on, you guys. Get out of the way. Hey, give me that. Give me that. Come on, Fiora. You guys, you're in, you're in her way. Here, Fiora. easier now that she likes those pill pockets. This little boy is ornery. <laughs> Him and Hudson. If you want a house that is going to rock and roll all the time, that's what you want to do. Huh, they look at that. See, even my tail flashes all the time. Okay, come on. No, you really got to get down. I don't trust you for anything. Cobbeth and Hudson would make a really fun fun team. So we have four boxes. Um, Amazon. Amazon. This is from Healthy Pets. It just came this afternoon late. And then a personal one. We do have two other boxes, but we're going to hold those. It's from um, Mama 3 Cat. Cat 3. Okay, she... Pardon? On okay, okay, so we're going to wait maybe till tomorrow because uh, I think she'd like to watch when they're open. So we're going to just hang on to those. So this one is from the Kentucky Amazon. Oh, come on, it's okay, guys. No fussing, no fussing in the fighting. Oh, oh, nice stuff. Oh, and this is from Judy, Judy W., uh, oh, this is Shorebird. Shorebird in Maryland. Thank you, Shorebird. Um, I have your note right up there by the cam as my reminder. Yep, from Shorebird, and Shorebird is from Maryland. And we have a case of the Fancy Feast. I'm going to go ahead and crack this one because I think we're starting. We can use this one in the cupboard right away. This one is the, the Tender Turkey. You know, Bella likes this, too, so we'll share this with Bella, of course, too. And CJ, our little kitty that's in um, Dodger's pen, likes that. And, of course, the baby food. I wonder if anybody else uses as much baby food as we do. But they like it. They like it. They dream of baby food every night, I think. In the mornings when I do breakfast, I only put one jar in, and the only reason I do that for their breakfast is because Bella likes it. I think she, Bella's in this pen. She's looking over here like, I think those are baby food jars. Yes, girl, we'll, we'll give you some more. Thank you, Shorebird. Extremely appreciate this. Both these items are well, well, well used. Bella. Yeah, she's, she's looking. I do think she saw that. Thanks a bunch. From Maryland. Wow. And... Then let's open the next Amazon box. Okay. What are you doing, Sabrina? Sabrina. Boop, boop, doop. Sabrina, sometimes I swear there's like five of her in here. She's here, there, and everywhere. See, she's already going in the office. She's a, always a busy girl. And this one is from the Amazon in Indiana. And I hope we have... Oh, wow, you guys, you're going to have a feast here. Um, oh, this is from Sunbeam that's on the chat. It says, Hi, Jackie and human and feline family. Please accept this small offering to help the great need. I also sent some Bonito Flakes. I guess they don't come with a gift card. Hoping to come visit someday soon. And this is from uh, Sunbeam on the chat and she and her husband is from Union City, Pennsylvania. Wow, cool. So we have, oh, I thought at first this was a uh, Friskies, but it's not. 
Oh, I know what this is now. I'm going to go ahead and take the plastic off because um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I keep, I keep the chicken down in that cupboard and uh, that way we don't overly use it. Uh, this is a Hormel, Hormel uh, White and Dark Chicken. And we use these for special cases where somebody just doesn't want to eat well. Or sometimes if we have to add medicine to their foods, we'll add a, a can or two of this. And it really, really does help them to want to eat it. Yesterday when um, our little Bella girl would not eat even her baby food, we got her started on one of these Hormel chickens. And little CJ was also had a little bit of it today. And she did uh, eat a little bit of that today. So I'm just going to take the plastic off. Boy, they sure wrap that tight. I'm not going to say what I said the last time about tight wrapping. I got rabbed about it. My own fault. Uh, nothing like embarrassing myself. Okay. Hormel chicken. We like Ann. The Bonito Flakes. I always like to, when I open this up for the kitties, uh, to give them some. Uh, and, of course, Octavia just knows that when we're going to do this. And, hey, Octavia. Kitty, kitty. Look. <laughs> Here, come up. You want to show them what you do? Huh? I always let her do this. But whoever ends up adopting Octavia has got to have spider webs, got to have a closet that she can raid. Got to have, oh, ooh, bonito flakes that she can have. Oops. We always let her stick her own head in there for a quick bite. I saw, uh, I think it was night before last, I sprinkled this out for everybody. And when I do, it sometimes gets on their back. And I saw her going around licking some of the other cat's backs. Here, you want one more bite? Okay. Now, the rest of you guys, here, we'll just give you a little bit down here. Go on, share it out. Yeah, we'll give them a little snacky tonight later with this. They love it. It's one of their favorite snacks. So thank you so very, very much. Um, I appreciate that very much, Sunbeam. And that one's from Pennsylvania. So I'll make sure on our map I've got a pin in Pennsylvania. And the pin, oops, where's my other one? From Maryland. Pretty cool. Okay, ah, Hudson, I don't need your help. This one is heavy, and it's from um, Newton Falls, Ohio. Hey, isn't this by you, Kurt? Yeah, I recognize because you said that about the zip code, I believe. This one's a heavy one. All they want to do is eat. They never want to help me. Now, now, be nice down there. Be nice down there. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wow. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this does everyone at FFRC. I see some mighty good and yummy stuff. Oh, geez. we got to share this picture. This is, this is what I look like sometimes. Poor kitty. Can you see that, Kurt? That kitty is dined out. Says, um, Dear Jackie, Kurt, and all the volunteers, I just want to say first thank you to all of you for your hard work and dedication to FFRC and all the kitties. I have been tuning into the webcam since this past June, and in that short time I have seen so many kitties come to the rescue center in various stages of health, be rehabilitated and adopted out to their forever home. I can't imagine how many cats have found refuge at FFRC through the years. To the kitties, you that's so nice, I love this. To the kitties, you have made me laugh and you have made me cry, tears of sadness and joy. 
I am so glad that you have reached a place to stay that is so safe and comfortable and full of love until you are adopted. And to all the Kitty residents, big hugs to you all. You all have brought a little more sunshine to my days. Here are some treats for you and goodies you can share with Jackie and everyone at FFRC. I hope you enjoy and I get to meet you all in person sometime. I am still pretty new to chat and don't get to participate often due to work, but I am hoping to be able to more in the future. And on the card itself, it says, My motto, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Happy Halloween. Many thanks to all of you. And, and um, her name is Kristen, or her webcam name is Chris NF44444. Thank you, Chris. That's, that's really, really nice. Um, I, I always save all my cards and, you know, all these hours and hours and hours that we put in here. Um, I appreciate that you appreciate what we do here. It's nice. So, we got stickers. I have to keep these away from my husband, though. He finds them in the drawer. Got to watch him. Butterfingers and Crunchies and Baby Ruth. And I know some of those are some of the volunteers' favorites. Hey, this tree will come in. It's that there's kitties everywhere. There's kitties everywhere. And I will share this. <laughs> the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. These are the jumbo bags with the snack size. Isn't Halloween great? Because we get to get this candy. Awesome. I can't tell you how many times that drawer is opened every day. We got kitty trees. Oh, my gosh. Where's me? Farah, Farah, you got some more. You got some more of these. You know, there's 45 in here, um, and we use two a day, so they only last, you know, a few weeks, one box. You guys have really kept us in good supply of these. Yeah, there's two of those. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And the Whisker Lickens, those are um, Atta Jane's and uh, Putter's favorite one. <laughs> oh, oh, here, Kitty, you got a toy. You got a toy. Oh, chicken. That's nice. I tried to find some today, so this will replace what we were getting low on the chicken. And Cutter likes these, and I know Bella ate a little bit of these today as well. And then the fish, we know they love this. I don't know if you've ever used this before, but wow, you can sure tell it's fishy. Here's some more toys. There you go. Oh, here's, here's one more. Too quick. Another temptation box. Then we have two cases of the friskies. Wow, this is a big assortment. Two friskies. These are the pouches. And sometimes, oh, a lot of times, I use these for breakfast time. And then a fancy feast. Oh, this is one. This one we don't get very often, but I know they'll, they love this. It's poultry and beef. It's the marinated morsels. So thank you. Oh, Miss, uh, Miss is looking at it like she wants to eat it. She's a big girl, aren't you, Miss? Uh? And Frisky's Gravy Sensations. And these are really, really gravy -y. These are These are easy to get the kitties uh, to eat. Thank you, Chris. Wow, what a lot of good stuff. A lot, a lot of good stuff. And I love the card. Thank you so very much. Sometimes, sometimes some of these days are long and some days are harder than others. And, you know, you guys really do make it easier for, for me and uh, help us get through it. It's nice to have the support of the volunteers. It's awesome to have the support of our families. And uh, the volunteers also have the support of their, of their families. And it's wonderful to have the support of the people that come in here in our town, but it's awesome to have the support of all you webcamers out there. You guys are really wonderful. Um, our volunteers today was Judy S. Carrie, who is Mrs. Ohio Peepers, and Carrie, I'm sure you saw, you did leave your cell phone here. We'll save it for you. It'll be on the red cabinet there. Um, Connie D. was here, and Jean and Livy, they, they actually, I think they just left a little bit ago. That's patient. Uh, have you ever seen patients' pictures? I don't think so. It is, Pam. Um, 
So we had lots of people in today, and lots of people stayed a long time. You know, Stacy also is here like five days a week, but in addition to doing her regular work, she volunteers here a lot too. She does a huge amount of uh, all kinds of stuff for me. She's she's wonderful. Uh, CJ, I just wanted to give an update on CJ. She's our real dark gray slate gray picture or a cat. I'm not sure if Kurt has taken a picture of her yet, but maybe he will soon and get her up on his Flickr account. Um, she's she's struggling a little bit. She's not anywhere near in perfect, perfect health. Uh, she came in loaded with ear mites, loaded with fleas, uh, just in very general poor nutrition state and um, struggling. She sleeps a lot, so I'm hoping that she's going to kind of kick over over this. She's eating a little bit better today. Just really thin. Um, just you can tell she's had a hard time out there. I'm going to just stop right there and get this box open. I think this is a box that one of the web, or uh, somebody emailed me about and had said to open as soon as we got it. But uh, I was gone when UPS came and I didn't have a chance anyhow. And I wasn't positive that this is what my email was about. So, and this afternoon I was really extra worried. We thought we lost Karen, you know, my daughter, Karen. Nobody could find her. I had all kinds of phone calls. Where's Karen? Where's Karen? Including her husband. She was lost. And I was getting panicky. It turns out she was just running her co-op her co that she does for the school kids. And her cell was not charged. I was really worried. So, this is really super light. So I think we, I know what this is. This is from Healthy Pet, and it is. It's a pro collar. Um, this is from Debbie B. Thank you, Debbie. She had told me. You know what is just, you guys are really awesome and amazing. Since all this has been going on with, with Bella, we not only get you guys' suggestions, which truly, you know, I, I am always open to suggestions. I will never be a person that says I, I'm afraid to try somebody else's ideas. I, I don't do that. I love people's ideas. So we did. We tried all kinds of things that, that you know, to try to help Bella. Um, but now that she's had her surgery, I've had offers on all kinds of things to help her and to help her life be more comfortable. And uh, one of them is the Pro Collar. And this is one that, that Debbie B. sent. And Debbie is from Minnesota. This is one of those, uh, well, I, I'm going to read it. It's one of those inflatable ones. It's a small one. And uh, when we're done here, I'll, I'll try that. Bella is not too keen on her e-collar, but what's... Oh, you know, another volunteer that was here today was Jenny Call, and uh, she's one of our local local friends here, and Jenny sat on the stool, and she they took off Bella's cone, and she sat there and did not take her eyes off of her so that Bella could have some time without that, so I appreciate that. So I will try this after our... our um, time here is done. I've, I've not ever tried one of these. I've heard of them. They're inflatable. They're supposed to be pretty comfortable and uh, more flexible to allow the animals to uh, eat easier but not to be able to lick back there. So back there. So we'll try it. Thank you, Deb Debbie. I appreciate that. We're going to give it a whirl. Okay, Bella? Um, Tukey. Tukey is going to go home tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Her family, oh, where's her family from? Detroit? I don't remember, it's, but it's a little ways away. They are actually, I think, almost in defiance now because her mom and dad live in defiance. Her mom, I used to work with when I was a nurse at the hospital. She and I worked in ICU together, so it was really nice to see her because her mom and her dad came, which is now Tukey's grandma and grandpa, and they were so nice because they paid for Tukey's um, adoption fee, and they also paid for one of Kellen's uh, cat fun packs, too. So that was pretty cool. So we'll send that cat fun pack home with Tukey on adoption tomorrow. So that's supposed to happen around 4 o'clock. 
<clears throat> I wanted to do a special thanks to Judy S. She always helps me on Fridays to clean the ionizers that we have. Those are our air filter system. And also, she always helps me with the treatment board, and that's so wonderful because we sit down over there. She works on the board. We write down all the treatments for two weeks at a time, but we do it every week so that we can keep it caught up. And then when we were done with that, Carrie and Judy helped me get uh, today and tomorrow's treatments done. Here's Tukey. You get to go home to your new home tomorrow. Hey, maybe your mom and dad's on there right now. Maybe your grandma and grandpa's on there. Isn't she just the cutest thing? She just purred back. Just was looking at her. Yeah. They're going to have their hands full, though, because in addition to being such a lover bug, she's really ornery. All these kitties are ornery. This morning for breakfast, oh, my gosh. They were just, or was that yesterday? That was yesterday. They were just crazy, crazy in the morning. Um, Kurt has been busy all day today. He's just about disappeared today out in the Kitty City and the clinic. He put a third layer of spar urethane on the plaque boards. Remember when people who wanted to adopt, or excuse me, to um, donate $250 or more, we put their name on our plaque board, and it's right outside the door of the new section there. We have two of them, I think it is, on there, and you had to make three more boards. They're about so long, so wide. They fit right on, each of them fit right on one piece of the um, siding. So he's made three more. We're going to fill it up, and it's it's really pretty. He also put the second layer of um, sealer, the urethane, I think it is, on the brackets for Kitty Campus or Kitty City for the catwalks. He's made these really nice wood um, uh, support brackets that will go on them, and he's he's got 12 of them, I think, or 16. And there's four colors, four of each. They're really going to be pretty when they're up on that white wall. He prep sanded a half of the catwalks for um, for sanding, was it? For staining. And then, and then the other half of them he sanded and wood filled. So when he's done with these, these, these catwalks are going to be really awesome. And they're also going to be stained um, different colors too. So when, when we get closer to that, I know that Kurt will take some pictures of it for you all. Our floor, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we got the estimate for the floor. After taking off, um, he had uh, the tax tax added into it. We don't, we're tax exempt. So when he decreased that, it turned out it was only $800 more. I know that seems like a lot, and it is a lot, um, but it's only $800 more for that quartz floor than for this flake. Lake floor. So we're we're just shooting out of the dark on it. We're going to go ahead for it and give them the okay. We're going to go with uh, uh, what's the name of it? It's it's kind of a tannish one with some specks in it, but it's uh, made out of quartz. The way that they prep this floor, it should last us forever. So I thought eight hundred dollars was well worth it. The quote that we got covers the um, the old office, I guess we can say, the new office, the welcome room the bathroom and thumper's room. So we're going to do all that. And then <clears throat> as we uh, raise more money for this, this floor here has got to be done. Uh, we are just, you can probably see it from here, we're just flaking out all over the place now. Actually, that grew again today. So, and Judy S. was down there wiping something up today on the floor, and Part of it flaked up and got underneath their fingernails. So, and I, and I don't like that to happen to the volunteers, but I also don't like the kitties playing with those flakes. So, we'll we're going to work on this later. Um, he's already ordered the quartz color that we're doing, and maybe the end of the week, if not the beginning of the next week, they'll get started. It's going to be a lot of moving things all around. It's going to take a total of four days, so it's going to be cool. We'll make sure you guys see what's going on on that. Uh, the calendars, we, Kate is leaving, my good, good friend Kate is leaving a week from Monday, which I'm not happy about. They spend six months here, six months in Arizona. A week from Monday, they head back to Arizona, so I never like to see that happen. We have, a, I think, like 20 calendars left is all out of 275, and I know they will sell, but in case any of you have not gotten the opportunity to purchase one, they're $20, $3 for shipping and handling, so a total of 23 
You can either mail me a check, we'll mail them out to you, or you can pay through PayPal and um, we'll get them sent right out to you. And we're also still number one in the uh, voting, which I think is awesome. Today's Friday, so like Sunday or Monday when it first started, it'll be two weeks that we're still in first place. And <clears throat> I just think it's wonderful. So thank you for putting us there and help us to stay there by voting. Uh, so we have some questions here. I asked how our center got started and when it got started. <coughs> our very first month was September of 2000, so that was a partial year. We took in a total of 84 cats in three months, but when we first started, Kitty Campus Room, the bigger of the three rooms was where we started. We were on, only going to take, I think it was 11 cats, and we filled up in that within a matter of just days. And I was just astounded because I thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to take care of 11 cats? How am I going to get them all vaccinated? You know, we already had our vet lined up. How are we going to get them all neutered, though, the transportating? And then big thing is how are we going to get them all adopted? Well, it just happened so fast and so quick, everything did. It just zoomed up. We added two more rescue rooms. We added um, the office. We actually had that whole office built on. But at the same time that we started this rescue center, I was also still boarding dogs. My daughter Dawn and I was boarding dogs. We were doing 44 dogs a night, and we were running like the rescue center on the side. Well, Dawn had to quit uh, because she was going to nursing school also, and uh, it was just too much for me to do everything. And so I chose to decrease my dogs. And actually, I think I continued to board dogs for another half, for another year. We kept, I kept it down to like 20, and then it just boomed. This rescue center just kept growing and growing, and so I ended up stopping the boarding. And then we did all this, all of this, and um, we just keep on continuing. That first full year that we did uh, in 2001, we took in 200 cats. Uh, what we try now to do, it's been running about 260 to 270 a year. That's that's a lot. That's, that keeps us plenty busy. So that's probably what it will be this year. But from 2000 to the end of 2000, um, whoa, do I have that wrong? I don't have this current. I, I picked an old one. Anyhow, from the beginning when we started to the end of last year, it was well over, I think it was 2,200 cats. I think I'm a little low on that. But there's a lot of them that comes in, a lot of them that goes through. We now make the policy that everything has to be spayed and neutered before they go out. We started that probably seven years ago. It only took us a couple years to to put that policy in effect because we didn't want to take any chance that any cat that came from here um, might get pregnant or cause a pregnancy. So everything then started, um, they had to be neutered before we adopted them out. So we actually started September 2000. We thought we were big time into cat rescue when we had just 11 of them back there. I still remember that feeling of being so overwhelmed. And our first volunteer, somebody else asked who the... Oh, Nuki asked who the volunteer was that's been here the longest, and that's Angie, who comes Monday night. She was one of my very first volunteers, and she is still here. And it's, it's wonderful because it seems like once we get our volunteers, they do stay with us for a good long time, which we like. Oh, Frank asked what the pink notes on the tree is. I think his, answer, his question was answered. It just says, don't lean on the branches. These branches... They do give a little, but if people stand there and talk and press on it, they, it pushes too much on them. The hardest thing to hold on them is when we have like 15-pound cats from over here that jump and land on the on the leaves because you can just see those branches going like this. Um, Wild asked where the furniture comes from. We have different sources. Huh. One of them is from that uh, Great Lakes Cat Furniture. Their website is cattreefurniture.com. 
every year when I go to the one uh, cat show in the in the I think it's February. Chris and I always go. I have yet to come back without something, and that's where the big tree came from. When we won the Cat Hero of the Year for the Animal Planet, this is this was the fun thing we were uh, got to purchase for for winning that. So that was cool. But every year that I've gone back now to the cat show, I I've, I've come back with something else. The purple flower and the orange flowers won. Uh, just a lot of this has I. I, I'm really kind of bad on the cat furniture. I love it. But Brad, who is the one who took the pole where the paddles were behind me, he has made a lot of this. Uh, we, he helps me and I help him. And so what he does for, he, for me is to build cat furniture. So he was here last week, and Canton Cat asked that. How is the big pole coming that holds up the ceiling? Thank goodness it didn't fall down, Canton, when, when we took it down. He's, he's, uh, it's going to be all brand new. The only thing that's going to be the original on it is the, the tree trunk that's on the inside. So he's going to put new hemp or sisal rope on the outside, and the paddles are going to be a little bit bigger, and I think he said he's going to make those out of cedar. So I wouldn't be surprised if that got back here last, uh, next week. Oh, Katmandu, you're so nice. You asked how our goat is doing out there all alone. He's doing really good. I, I keep an eye on that, and almost all the time, there's always the cats, the farm cats that's out there, and they're all neutered, vaccinated, everything. But the farm cats are out there, the chickens and the, do go, uh, the ducks and geese, they all mingle inside his um, corral area. They can go in and out, but they do keep him company, and I think he's doing okay. So I think we will probably not get another goat for him. Our Siamese Mish asked where Putter is. He is here. He has played kind of quiet this afternoon. Usually he's out right in here looking at us and staring at us, but I think he kind of played low-key today. He's doing great. We weighed him the other day. His weight is just a so perfectly great. He's doing, he's doing good. Um, MK Mouse asked about how the DC TV program went today. Well, it didn't. Uh, we they didn't they could not come and so we finally just decided for this one month we've never done this but we decided to blow it off and we're going to do it for no oh gosh that's November but we're going to change dates Thursdays don't work for me because I need to help my parents on that day so it's going to be a different uh, day I'm not sure what it's going to be but uh, we did not do that today. Cat Man Do also asked how my parents were. Mom's doing good. Dad actually spent the whole day in bed. So hopefully that means tomorrow's going to be, he's going to be um, bright eyed and bushy tail, I hope. Um, I know I'm going to mispronounce this. Kim and Smew. I'm sorry. Kim and Smew, maybe. I'm not sure how Frankie B is. Haven't, haven't heard yet from Frankie B. I know it would be cool. To Pardon? Oh, in Des Moines, Iowa. I bet it is too. Kim in Des Moines, Iowa. I bet it is too. Um, if I should just get his record out and call him because I know we'd all love to see what he looks like with the hair all grown back. Uh, Ice Maiden asked how we keep the kitties from spraying and is it a problem here? My policy is I will not adopt a cat out that has a potty problem. I just won't do it because as soon as they would have an accident at their new house, they're going to come right back here. So we, I don't adopt them out, but, you know, we really have very minimal. It's so rare that we have any problems like that. Uh, the litter boxes are cleaned all the time. They're scrubbed once a week. We try to keep the stress level. That's the biggest thing with any kind of a rescue center or shelter is to keep the stress level low. And I think we do a pretty good job of it, and that's by making sure they're healthy, their vaccinations are good, um, the emotional support that they need. All these things kind of add in together. The ones that we do have a couple that have litter box problems, but they're permanent ones, and that's okay. One of them, you all know, Bella has a little problem, and that's because of her partial paralysis on her back end. She doesn't always make it in the box, but it's no big deal. We just clean that up. 
it doesn't affect the other cats and make them want to potty more. So it's rare though that that happens, and I hope it stays rare because that is that's the number one reason that cats are returned to shelters or rescues or kicked out of their house or all those awful things is because of inappropriate litter box problems. So we we just hope it always stays good here. So thank you for your questions. Hope I answered them. Hope I didn't miss any. And um, Paul's here. He's going to set some traps because we've got somebody dumped off a cat out there that we're going to try to catch and hopefully neuter. So he's going to do that tonight. And uh, we'll try Bella's collar on her from Debbie. And I know you guys want to see Bella. So we'll get her out. Bella, can you say hi? Here, let's take this off a minute. There we go. Off we go. Here, take that cone off. Say, oh my gosh. <laughs> She's eating better today. She's not quite up to par on her eating. She did finally pee, so that was a good thing. Aww. She doesn't like it. But her incision looks really, really good. Swelling is minimal. Looks good. Bella says, I'm tired of you looking at it, Mom. Lots of people have asked me to give her kisses, so we've been doing that. We've left her sleep, though, today. Whenever she's laid her head down and wanted to sleep, we haven't pestered her too much. We've been just kind of letting her do that. And Stacy, bless her heart, she knows that it's really important to keep all the pressure off of that. So she's got her bed again today about like this thick. Uh, it's really, really cushy. So can you tell them all thank you for caring about you? Oh, you're looking a little grumpy. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We love to have you be a part of what we do here. Anybody wants to come and visit? We love visitors. Um, just give me a call. Let me know you want to come, and we'll welcome you. So thanks again, and we'll see you all later.